This is Robert Brodsky from uh, Newsday. You've been busy, Robert. It's been a busy week. It's uh, <laughs> uh, just another just another busy news week here at Newsday. Yeah, I've seen your name on quite a few stories this week. <laughs> and and uh, stay tuned for this weekend. We'll have something more. Yeah. Huh? Wow. Well, I, I, one of the I guess uh, the one we were going to talk about. I hear one of your favorite stories is the potholes. Oh, who doesn't love a good pothole story? <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're a victim of one. Yeah. Well, we cer- we I, I I probably receive more emails from that story alone than just about anything I've written in Newsday in almost eight years. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'll bet that 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 affects people directly. They, right. They, and everyone wants to share their story. Everyone's frustrated. It's uh, it's an equal opportunity offender. It affects pretty much everyone on the road. Uh, mm-hmm. You know. Whatever neighborhood you're in, whatever kind of car you're driving, yeah. you're going to hit a pothole eventually. Yeah, yeah. And some of it, you know, I mean, to pay, I guess the one guy that you spoke about in the article was, uh, he was up to about $1,000 on tires and and rims. Yeah, and and to keep in mind, and, and it, your your listeners don't uh, need me to tell you, the, the pothole season hasn't even started yet. I know. So the, the roads are in pretty poor condition across Long Island, but keep in mind that these craters usually don't really start to uh, explode until uh, the weather starts to clear up, and we haven't even really had our first winter snowfall, so yep. uh, it's, we're, we're, we haven't even begun to see the worst of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Okay, so I'm a guy driving along on the road, and I hit a pothole, and it totally wrecks my wheel and my tire. And when I get out of my car, and I'm jumping up and down, screaming and yelling, who can I rightfully blame? Well, I guess it depends what roadway you're on. Okay. There, you know, uh, depends on where you are. There are roads. Obviously, there are state roads. Uh, there, so you could have you could be driving on the Long Island Expressway, the Southern State Parkway. Mm-hmm. Um, you could be driving on a county road. You could be driving on a town or village road. Um, and and I don't think any one of them are in any much better shape than the next. I mean. Mm-hmm. Each have their own strategy for for managing the bottles, but one thing is certain: you're not getting your money back from any of them. Right? Yeah, there was a thing at one time that if uh, I, I mean I'm I'm just winging it here, but you know if you if you reported a pothole. And then, right. You know, I think and if you I think if you gave if you give notice to the municipality uh, a certain amount of time in advance, but I would. I feel pretty confident that if you know the potholes there in the first place, you probably aren't hitting it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, we need we need a guy like the had in Manhattan. He was going around putting flower pots with flowers in the in the. And we pothole. had a guy. We had a guy out here in Suffolk who was filling his own potholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I uh, that that's the thing. Um, I, you know, I, I could imagine sending crews out and just saying, you know, fill the potholes, um, and if they weren't. Uh, let's say hampered by well this is a county road i can't touch that one uh this is a state road i can't touch that one but i can do you know this municipality if if they could just fill all the pot fill the potholes that you find um well they they it's a, it's like a game of whack-a-mole you know yeah. every time you pop every time one uh breaks another one comes to raise places right. take its place and can you also keep in mind uh you know filling these potholes is only half the problem. The, 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 the long-term solution, according to experts, is to start uh, coming up with a, a long-term management solution that will last years, and more repaving, more work in the spring and summer, taking these cracks and filling them before they start to explode, mm-hmm. uh, and not waiting until there are these gaping holes in the uh, roadway. Yeah. Well, how about coming up with some materials that don't turn into garbage after a few Absolutely, you know the. Uh, it didn't make the story, but one of the, the the one of the chief engineers in Suffolk County basically said one of his toughest problems is that they haven't found a asphalt material that is uh, both affordable and effective. Right. Uh, so you know, with the county as large as Suffolk, basically conceding that they still don't have a decent and affordable municipal asphalt that's uh, quite telling. Hmm. So that, that big glass fault experiment that they had a few years ago was a failure, I guess. Uh, I couldn't speak to that specific, but uh, I think I think all you have to do is drive across the roads in Long Island to know that whatever whatever they're trying isn't working very well. Yeah, no. Uh, I, and, 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 and every municipality has their own strategy. They're all trying different things. 
you know, there's, and, and the one thing that, you know, everyone's cognizant of is the best strategy is not necessarily to have three or four folks, you know, out in the middle of the roadway in the cold mm-hmm. where, you know, they could get struck by another automobile. So they're coming up with different ways to try to fill them quickly. Yeah. Whether or not it's effective and they're getting ahead of it is, uh, remains to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like, you know, it's always, it's always going to be a catch up problem. Um, and yet, and I, I noticed, uh, I think it was uh, someone in your article had stated, you know, that the, the whole road needed to be repaved to address the potholes continuously is a waste of money. That's correct, and and often that they, they, it's about when you do it. They want these uh, roads to be repaved in the spring and summer after the season's over. Mm-hmm. Now, some of it depends on the, on the condition of the roadway and, and how long ago it was ro- the road was repaved. You right. know, if you do it too soon, all the work you did, you know, a couple of months or a year back uh-huh. go to waste. You wait too long, and it's going to take a bigger uh, amount of time and effort to complete the project. So, you know, listen, this is a fact of the matter is we have, a, we have two very large counties here. Mm-hmm. We have... Twenty percent of all drivers in New York State are registered in Nassau and Suffolk County. Right. So we have we have a large counties with a tremendous amount of drivers, obviously with limited forms of public transportation, mm-hmm. and this is uh, the end result. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you think? I mean, I personally, I, I, and I'm just, of course, shooting from the hip here, but I'm thinking that some kind of technology is the only way to move forward. Something that can address these potholes a lot faster than two guys with a shovel. I would imagine so, and I, I would, I would uh, imagine that companies are, are, are always trying to invent the the material that's going to last longer, be cheaper, can be laid down quicker and more efficiently. Um, you know, I, I and there may be material, but is it going to be cost effective for municipalities who have to do this in bulk? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, there's certainly smarter minds than mine. We'll have to come up with an answer for this, but it yeah, I just, think it's, it's probably a it's probably a, a complaint that's as old as time. And exactly. government officials government officials told me that it's pretty much with along with taxes their most frequent complaint that they hear. Yeah, is when they go out uh, to public forums, it's what they hear most is, uh, you know, what are you going to do about this bottle? Yeah. Yeah, and and at this time of year, this is the story where we usually, you know, we start to get into, uh, and and of course, you know, you're right. It's usually later. We haven't even started the season yet. That's so, right. So that's the, right. Come come March and April. Yeah. The uh, the screaming is going to be much louder. Right. And no, my inbox will be much filler. <laughs> well, tell me, do you think that the deterioration at this point in time is? It's certainly not a result of storms. So is oh, it's certainly not. It's cer- it's, it's 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 a it is. I'll say a it's, patch, a, it's a patchwork approach that municipalities have had to do. They are right. they are facing uh, tighter budgets. It has some some to do with the two percent tax cap. So there's limits to what they can raise their their the the disposable revenue is limited yeah. um so they spend much of their budget on patching holes as opposed to repaving so they only last so long yeah. they continue to pop up and the only way to really fix the issue obviously is greater uh, proactive repaving yeah. but we're also in the northeast and weather is going to remain a factor we have heavy vehicles yeah. that are that are driving over these roads heavier all the time right and right. and there this might not be one of those problems that has an easy solution man yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're. Um, at this point in time, let me make a quick left-hand turn. And since you also wrote a story about tax assessments, I'm curious, what should Long Islanders do now? Speaking of potholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we covered a story this week about uh, Republican elected officials, both in the town of Hempstead and the county legislature, who are raising increased concerns about the county executive Laura Kern's uh, reassessment plan. Um, there's There was uh, notices that have been sent to about 400,000 residents so describe, describing what their new um, assessments are going to be. About 85,000 of them ultimately, after they got this initial letter, saw a reduction because there were concerns about uh, mistakes. Mm -hmm. So 85,000 people got um, a reduced assessment on the value of their property. 
but there's about 400,000 residential properties in Nassau County. So these elected officials, including the uh, Hempstead receiver of taxes, Don Clavin, and legislators Laura Schaefer and Tom McEvitt, is that's a, that's a good question, which is what happens to the 315,000 homes who did not see their assessment decline? Because ultimately, the assessment is a, is a pie. And if you take a slice and reduce it from one side, it has to be filled on the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the at this point, there's not a good answer because... Technically, there's a difference between assessment and taxes. Assessment is what the value of your home is, and it doesn't necessarily correspond perfectly with what you will pay on property taxes for that home because they say, well, you're going to have an opportunity to grieve over the next, uh, say, 15 months, uh, whether you disagree with the county's um, determination, and then that will ultimately influence what the tax distribution is uh, on your uh, on your property, mm-hmm. so but there's without this, without question, if one side goes down, yeah. others are going to pick up the slack. Oh, it's like they say, somebody's paying, <laughs> and it is not going to be the county. Right, right, right. So, uh, it, so people who are in this, is there anybody that they can write a letter to, or make well, a phone the call to, uh, or? the county has been going through. Uh, a massive uh, reassessment process. The legislature is continuing to provide oversight of it, and homeowners do have an opportunity, uh, beginning immediately, to grieve the way they have for the past eight years. Uh, under former county executive Ed Mangano, they've had, they still have an opportunity to grieve their taxes. They have an opportunity to challenge it, either filing a grievance themselves or hiring one of these uh, uh, tax uh, grievance firms, Mm -hmm. although the firms uh, take a uh, often 50% of whatever reduction you would receive. So there is still opportunity to challenge it. Uh, The book is certainly far from closed on this, and this has been an extremely messy and uh, uh, error-ridden process on multiple levels on the county front. Mm -hmm. It's a few people would disagree that this has been um, at least poorly implemented on on a few levels. Right. Well, so... uh, I mean, everybody has... Well, not everybody, but I'm certain... uh, a, a decent number have received their actual assessments. Uh, right. Every homeowner should have at some point uh, before the uh, close of 2018 should have received a tax impact notice indicating what their uh, projected or estimated uh, uh, home assessment is going to be. Right. I mean, and, well, those, and, and those values, uh, that which are going to be for the 2020-2021 tax year, they should be. They are finalized and they're posted online. And anyone who's received who, who's received that can go, can go look up their property if they haven't received it in the mail. Right. Okay. So, and those numbers are. I mean, as clo- they're 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 they're, as they're clo- locked in unless they unless you grieve it. But, okay. But many folks will grieve it, which will change things uh, continuously. Right. 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 Wow. Well, Never a dull moment. Yeah, I was going to say, stay busy, Robert. We need you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, thank you very much for calling us today, and uh, I, I wish we could talk longer. I always do. But, uh, hey, maybe next time. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me on. Have a uh, great weekend, guys. Thank you. You too. Bye. Take care. And uh, we do. We want to thank uh, uh, Robert Brosky for calling us, too, from Newsday, and uh, as, uh, Laura Albanese also. Uh, and we want to thank Newsday for... Um, making the, the people who create those news stories and get the answers for us um, and write the stories for Newsday. And they're kind enough to come by here and let us uh, ask them a few questions.